So I've wanted to do a video now for a while talking about the different sensor sizes in cameras and I'm going to start this one off a little bit differently. I'm going to start it off with my summary and basically say that the larger the sensor size, the better low light performance, better image quality, and greater artistic freedom. We're going to unpack that statement of artistic freedom in just a second. Basically we're talking about the ability to control your depth of field. Those are the pluses of working with a large sensor size. The downsides are uh, the equipment is heavier, costs more, and requires bigger and more costlier lenses. That statement is a little less true than it was just a year or two ago, um, but in general, it's a good rule of thumb. If you want full frame, you have to pay a lot more money, um, and the gear that goes along with it is more expensive. So that's it. You could stop watching and go buy something on Amazon using those links down below. That's what helps keep my videos ad-free and gives me time to produce them. Um, I earn a small percentage for everything you buy using those Amazon links down below and I'd appreciate it if you would use them. Uh, also, please subscribe so that you um, can easily follow along and get updates when new videos are published. And if you haven't yet, head over to my Facebook page. That link is down there as well and click a like because that way you'll be notified of videos and blog posts and giveaways of which we have some time. So if you're still watching, you want a little bit more information about sensor sizes. I've got a range of cameras here from cell phone on up to a medium format film camera. I certainly do not have enough money to be buying a medium format digital camera at this time. Cell phone camera sensors are tiny, less than centimeters in width and height, um, basically a, little, a tiny little square. You know though that they're capable of producing really nice images. We've seen a lot of great things come out of the latest phones, Nokia, uh, iPhone of course. Those all are capable of producing really nice shots. What you may have also noticed though is that they're almost always have huge depths of field in those images, meaning that just about everything in that image is in focus from near to far. And that is one of our first big differences with sensor size. The smaller your sensor size, the more difficult it is to create a shallow depth of field. And again, sorry if I'm preaching to anybody who already knows this, but when we're talking about depth of field, we're talking about that area of focus um, somewhere in front of your lens to a little bit further out. And a shallow depth of field is very narrow. And being able to have a shallow depth of field is really nice, especially in portraiture, uh, because it allows you to isolate your subject from the background. And so you've all seen the nice portraits where behind the person or the model, uh, it just kind of fades to this real soft blurriness. Light points are big and blurry, and that's called bokeh. And it's really nice. It's very difficult to do that with a cell phone camera. There are some cheapy ways and, and cheaty ways to do it where the software tries to kind of blur the background and things of that sort. You can also shoot really close to your subject. Obviously for uh, you know, a model or a portrait picture, that's probably not gonna work well. But flowers and things of that sort, you can get very close because the closer you get, the easier it is to create that shallow depth of field. That's true across all lenses. But you have to get really close with cell phone. Point and shoots, better. The sensor size in these things is still really small, and that leads me to talk about the next major difference, and that is low light uh, capabilities. When you know, when you use a traditional point and shoot sensor, low light, really when you get about 400, or so let's, let's stop for a second about low light and just talk about ISO. When you raise your ISO 400, 600, 800, you really start to see some noise very quickly. Above 800 in most typical point and shoots, and it gets very grainy very quick. Above 16 or 32, and it's basically unusable. There are some newer point and shoots that do a nice job, that, and there are also some point and shoots that have larger sensors in them. So um, a lot of folks, so, so that's there. But a lot of folks who come to me and say, well, I want to buy a DSLR because it's got better low light performance than a point and shoot. And on the whole, that is true. You have a bigger size sensor in here. But then you have two DSLRs. And what is the difference between these two other than one is bigger? It's the size of the sensor. 
So our entry level Canon and Nikon sensors, we typically call them crop sensors because it crops, uh, it crops the sensor from a full frame. This is a full frame sensor. Full frame is measured against what a piece of 35 millimeter film used to be sized. So that's where we get the idea of full frame. So the benefit of having a crop sensor is you can have this nice little camera. You can have nice small lenses because your field of view is more narrow. Um, and you can still get great image quality. Some of the latest crop sensors, both T4i um, and especially on the Nikon, the Nikon D3200 and we expect the D5200 when it's out to have really nice uh, high ISO, low light performance um, are typical in crop sensors. And that's only going to improve in the future. Not everybody needs full frame. But one other important factor to remember or to, to keep in mind about crop sensors is that your field of view, and I mentioned this a second ago, your field of view is narrowed um, because the sensor is smaller. I'm using my hands to kind of show you that field of view. When you shoot, let's say this, on this T4i right now, I have a 50 millimeter lens. When you shoot with this lens, you're not actually shooting at 50, you're shooting at 80. And how you arrive at that number multiply is you, the crop factor, which I know in Canons is 1.6. 1 1.6 1 .6 times 50 equals 80. So your field of view is actually 80 millimeters when you shoot with this camera. That's why the kit lenses that these cameras come with start at 18. That's really, really wide if you put that on a full frame. We'll talk about why you can't actually put a kit lens on a full frame in a second. But um, 18 translates to be, I think it's somewhere around 30. Uh, I think it's right, uh, it's around 30, uh, whatever 1.6 times 18 is. Nikon, the crop, the crop factor is 1.5, so you have to multiply. I don't want you to overly stress about this. I get a lot of questions that say, well, if that's true, you know, then I should be looking at X lens or this lens or smaller lens. And when you look at the EF-S lenses, those are the lenses made by Canon specifically for crop sensor bodies. They are typically made taken into account, taking into account this um, cropping of your field of view. And so that's why they start at 18 and go to 55. It's really more of a 30 to 80 something um, focal length, which is a really nice range. Um, but that's also why, you know, I do love the 50. Uh, they're wonderful lenses, but they can be a little narrow um, on, a, on a crop sensor. So that's something to keep in mind. That's why I was really excited about the 40. The 40 uh, backs you off a little bit um, and is quite nice. And one of my current favorite primes for entry level on Canon is the Sigma 31.4. That's a really nice focal length to work with um, as a prime lens on T4i. So full frame I mentioned, it's um, a 35 millimeter sized sensor in here and um, you know, produces really nice low light images, produces really high resolution files, but you have to have the full EF lenses. Uh, the kit lens that comes with Canon and the 18 to 135, they will not fit on a Canon. If you could get them to fit and you took a picture, and I'll throw some examples up of this, but if you could through them, you would get a circle um, and outside that circle on your image would be blackness. Uh, because that lens is designed for a crop sensor and so it's narrower than the field of view that the uh, full frame sensor is doing. So one of the things that's really exciting about this time is that both Canon and Nikon have recently released the Canon 6D and on the Nikon side um, the Canon D600 uh, entry level full frame cameras. I'm going to put entry level in quotes there. They're very nice. They're down around $2,000, which is still a lot of money. But when you look at the price of how these full, where these full frame cameras were just a year or two ago, uh, it's, it's really nice. Um, who needs a full frame camera? Well, you know, need needs to be in quotes as well. But if you are someone who's making money at photography and you're often required to shoot in low light environments, uh, a great example is wedding photographers, uh, churches, but even more importantly, or you know, more realistically, at the reception, the, um, often the lighting can be horrible. Uh, all that ambiance just means really low light. So 
you need a camera that's still going to get good results when you're shooting at 3200, 5000, 6400. On the 5D Mark III, I've shot at 6400 and gotten perfectly usable files. It's really nice to be able to do that. The downside though is the lenses are really, really expensive and, and it's all heavy. If I was just walking around and taking pictures, travel photography, kids and things of that sort, I certainly would not need a full frame sensor. But the other people who might want to consider it are landscape photographers because the amount of resolution that you can get um, from these full frame sensors is quite nice. But um, it's not something everybody needs, it's just something to keep in mind. And then finally, just because it's kind of fun, because I've recently picked it up, is a uh, Roliflex here. And this is a medium format camera. They do make medium format digital cameras. They are extremely expensive. Uh, I think the cheapest, cheapest that I've seen is in the neighborhood of ten to $15,000. Hasselblad is um, one of those. But um, they're just excellent. And uh, you can get incredible high resolution files out of there, but then you have to work with those files as too. So that's something to keep in mind as well. So that's general idea of sensor sizes and a little bit of talking about the low light image differences, uh, the crop factor. And if you have any questions about these lenses, uh, or sorry, about sensor sizes, lenses for the different sensor sizes, please leave a comment below, find me over on the Facebook, I don't know why Facebook is over there, but I always point over there. Um, and uh, or shoot me an email. All of that information is down below, and I'd be happy to answer and help you find the best sensor size for you. Please subscribe. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.